All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a bit of a Breba tasting. And I really wanna compare and contrast the different flavors and textures and eating experience of these different fig varieties that, of course, can and will reliably produce Brabas for you. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video before we do the tasting. I wanna talk a lot about Brabas before we begin and kind of where I stand on the subject of Brabas in general. Now, first of all, what is the Braba crop? The Braba crop is the first crop of figs. There's two different distinct crop of figs that your fig tree can produce. And I find that a lot of people don't even know that they have a fig tree that can produce the first crop of figs. The Brabas, which is the first crop, ripens on last year's growth. So if you go ahead and prune your fig tree every year and cut it really far back or prune it incorrectly, you're never going to ripen the Braba crop because you're cutting away the growth where the Braba buds are present. However, you can still get a solid crop of figs if you cut back your fig trees because the second crop of figs called the main crop ripens on the new growth. And that's a really unique trait that fig trees have. As the fig tree grows, every leaf can correspond to a new fig and there's really no other fruiting plant that does that to my knowledge, at least in a temperate climate. So figs are really special. Not only can they produce two different crops, but I'm here in the Philadelphia area, zone 7A. I'm actually getting even three crops of figs. This variety right here next to me called Green Michurinska is gonna produce three crops of figs this year. So that's a second set of main crop that ripens about 30 to 45 days later than the first crop of main. And the same thing here with this variety called Moro de Caneva. These are incredible varieties, and I would argue probably a lot of these varieties can do that as well if you really know what you're doing. And that's what I've dedicated this channel to, is learning as much as I can about figs so that I can maximize and have the best harvest possible, to have the best eating experience possible. So the Breba figs, uh, let's go back to those. Um, I would argue that the Breba crop is for everybody. It's not just a crop that is for people in mild summer places or short season climates like the United Kingdom, uh, like the Pacific Northwest or parts of it like the Willamette Valley or San Francisco or even parts really far north like in the Northeast or Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. This crop is beneficial for everybody because it ripens 30 to 45 days earlier than the main crop does. So if you want figs at an earlier date, they're also, by the way, at a really high quality. I am shocked to see and taste how good these actually have been. Um, they are definitely uh, a little bit worse in quality than the main, but there are a number of varieties that we're gonna talk about in today's video, and we'll say it at the end, some of the varieties I really recommend after we do this tasting. But there are varieties like Moro de Caneva, Green Michurinska, Villa de Bordeaux, Adriatic Figs, uh, Brianzolo Rosso, uh, Long de Oot. These varieties can produce incredible Brabas that compare very closely to the main crop that they ripen. So they're also, by the way, larger. Look at the size of this Long de Oot fig. This is probably 150 to 200 grams and they're all this size. The other weird thing I learned this year, which I've never heard in any publication I've ever read, especially even by the experts uh, that know about figs, uh, the Brava crop ripens very quickly. What I mean is it ripens all at once. They'll ripen in the, in the span of like five to 15 days. Whereas the main crop is pretty consecutive over the length of its uh, ripening process. And they're gonna ripen probably in 30 to 60 days in that window. So a ripening, harvest window of 30 to 60 days, the Brabas are ripening all at once. Now this is good and bad. I just talked about that in a different video. If they all ripen at once, I can take this whole thing of figs right here and I can make jam or I could process them all at once. It's kind of like a determinate tomato and um, that I get all my tomatoes all at once, make them in the sauce or paste, and then I'm done. I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year. Uh, so to me, I think the Brabas are in that way, very interesting, but they also can be, a, it can be a negative where the Brabas can get hit with a lot of rain. In that short period of time, today we're getting about an inch of rain. 
Uh, luckily, it's been relatively dry up until this point, but later we're gonna get about an inch of rain from the remnants of Hurricane Beryl. So, uh, you know, that would ruin a lot of these figs. That whole inch of rain is enough to destroy a lot of them, especially because I have to wrap them all with organza bags to protect them from birds. So, um, you know, that's just another weird, interesting fact about them. Other thing I wanna mention, not only is this beneficial to everybody, but it can be difficult to grow them in colder places. And I've described that in other videos. I've talked about the beginning of this spring where the Brabas have a two drop phases or at least one drop phase. The Brabas or the trees wake up from dormancy, assuming they are not pruned the wrong way, assuming your winter is mild enough and the branches are not damaged. The trees will wake up and they'll put out their flush of growth and with that flush of growth comes the main, the Braba crop of figs. So they're all swelling at the same time. And unfortunately what can happen is that the tree, if it's not established enough, what I've learned here, after having my trees in the ground for so many years and they becoming bigger and more and more established, these trees are able to, with, uh, to withstand the energy requirement of these Braba figs. So the more time that goes by, the better these trees can actually hold on to those brabas. What also happens is there not every variety is meant to produce braba. And so you may actually have brabas start to swell in the beginning of your growing season. And because the variety is not meant to, it will then drop them off right away anyway. I'm in a zone 7A where if I'm doing it, you can do it. So that's my point. Um, but you have to make sure that you are protecting these branches if you're gonna have really cold temperatures. Now, I've gone the extra length to talk about in some of my videos about the process of protecting them, but I've also gone in the length to describe the process of pruning them and how limiting your pruning is actually gonna help the branches lignify better. And when they lignify better, the brabas and the wood itself is able to withstand the winter cold. So that way, you're able to grow brabas um, and have a more reliable tree that produces brabas in these colder places where you otherwise think, okay, this would not be possible. I had originally for years thought that the mild spring temperatures, the fluctuations in temperatures in the spring was a big determining factor as to whether or not your brabas will hold. And I think that still is partly true. Uh, if your brabas uh, are starting to swell, it's early in the season and your spring is not really just there yet. You can see a lot of dropping, I think that will happen. But again, I think this problem is really solved by just having more mature, larger trees that get through the winter time, are pruned properly, they lignify properly. Um, and so all the things we talk about on this channel about growing figs is gonna get you this, even in cold places. Now, we still have a, a lot of time that we need to see what's gonna happen because last winter was very mild. I think we only got down to 12, which is incredible for zone 7A. Uh, and it's been rather mild the last few years. So once we see a temperature below five, we'll really get to determine, first of all, how hardy the trees are, what the pruning and the lignification things I've been preaching about are doing, but also, uh, you know, if these Brava figs are gonna be reliable at those temperatures. Regardless, you may not get them every year in zone 7A. So, you know, saying that they are ultra reliable or you're gonna get them every year is probably a lie in zone 7A and not true, but you know what? Uh, if you have a favorable winter, a favorable year, this is what you get. So that's my point. And uh, let's taste some of these Brabas. I think we've learned really a lot about them this year. And uh, yeah, let's taste some of these. First off, we'll start with the Moro de Caneva. These are just, this is just an incredible fig. It's a commercial variety. Uh, the main crop's incredible. The Braba crop's incredible. And the Braba crop tastes rather similar to the main crop. These are really not that far away in quality to the main crop. So, uh, in fact, I'm seeing right now, and this one I just opened up, 
even that red coloration is there that you'll see in the main crop. But I normally, when I've been ripening these Brevas, especially the last few days, they're more brown on the inside and they don't get that red coloration. But even if they don't have the right coloration, people get fixated on that. They still taste relatively the same, with or without the coloration. The mane is so comparable. This one here tastes just as good as the main crop. And in fact, they're bigger. Um, they're ripening all at once. This is an unbelievable variety that uh, is extremely hardy, a commercial variety, rain resistant, early, ripens a nice Braba crop and main crop. It's super productive. It's just an insane tree that I would probably put in a class of very few fig trees in terms of production, reliability, you know, um, it's really, it's almost in a class of its own for all the qualities that it has. This one I opened up first has a little bit of mold at the eye, which is pretty uncharacteristic of this fig because the eye is so closed. This one uh, is also more red on the inside. What I really like about this fig though, as well as the texture, this is a really nicely textured, jammy, thick interior fig. Uh, I would say the flavor is up there, but it's not the, the most highest flavored fig. It's all about, for me, uh, the texture in these figs, more so than the flavor. And that is just, that's just unbelievable. Now, speaking of texture, there's a new fig uh, that I've been able to try this year called Brianzolo Rosso. And Brianzolo Rosso, this one I think is a little bit fermented, so we won't eat that one. But Brianzola Rosso has been an incredible surprise. Um, I really had no idea what to expect. I, I had heard from growers that I had found this and got this fig from, and also one other fellow grower, because it's not really a variety that's ever talked about. I don't know why that is. It just doesn't have a fancy name, and so no one, no one cares about it. But it's a really early fig, and... Um, it has a, the most amazing texture to it. It is so creamy that you almost wouldn't believe it. So it has a texture that's unlike any other fig that I've eaten. And for me, I think that's really special. Because if I can find a variety that's very different in some way than other varieties, that's the variety that I wanna grow. That's the variety that I wanna recommend. Um, so it's really thick, really creamy, and has that right texture uh, that's really different than any other variety. The flavor is rather similar to a, a sugar fig with some caramel in there. Even the ones that are, are underripe um, of this variety actually still have that really thick, awesome texture to it. Yeah, it's just, it really is unlike any other fig it's like a creaminess. Like I can't explain it any other way. It's like eating, um, it's not necessarily a marshmallow, but it's similar and it's just creamier, like a creamy marshmallow. Like if you combine creamy ice cream or whipped cream with a marshmallow, mix them together, that's what you would get. So, Man, people have been sleeping on that variety for such a long time. Here's green Michurinska. I had one of these uh, a few days ago. I would say maybe five, about a handful of days ago. That was so unbelievably good that it blew me away. I was like, that's a Brava? That's how good they are? Um, the main crop's also very tasty of this, and they dry really quickly on the tree. They ripen rather quickly. Uh, they ripen faster, I think, than Moro de Caneva, so a shorter hang time. This is just overall a very high quality fig. It's hardy. It is actually early. The Brebas are ripening alongside all the other varieties. And it's not really that late uh, for an Adriatic styled fig. 
But the Brabus to me do, do remind me of a sugar fig, a really, really high quality sugar fig, kind of like Moro de Caneva with some of that fruitiness to it. But uh, yeah, it's just really good because they just become more ripe more consistently. Now this one does, this one has more like a marshmallow texture, actually, and it has more berry flavor than Moro de Caneva. Oh man, that's so good. That's absurdly good. It's like eating a berry flavored marshmallow, seriously. That's so good. And all of them are pretty much ripened to perfection or very close to it. And um, man, that's just really hard to beat. Here's a new one to me. This is called Sifrari. And it's similar in the Breba to White Triana, A Triano, Canadria. You can see the color there around the pith, that purplish color. Really characteristic of, uh, of those varieties. These are jelly figs, as I like to call them. Uh, but Safrari so far has been different than the others uh, in terms of its main crop. Let me see if the Bravas are similar. Yeah, much similar Breba, but it's thicker, like um, almost like a Col de Dame or a Smith. Really good Breba. Not as sweet, not as ripe as I probably would want it. You know, and that's the trade-off and a lot of the, the problems with these figs, like the best tasting one is the one that's the most ripe. Um, you know, it's, it's, you could say one has a better flavor, obviously a different texture, different this, different that. Maybe you could say, oh, this one tastes like blueberries or whatever. But at the end of the day, the one that is the most consistently ripe, especially in poorer climates like my own, where it's humid, uh, it's not so dry, you know, this is the thing you want to look for. And a, a fig like Safrari, although this is good, it's, it's not ripening to the quality that these other two are and so it just takes longer for it to get to the perfect point now perfect comparing them all when they're perfect a different story maybe this one is better and that bite is really honey sweet very very sweet fig it's amazing how different they are That's really good. All right, let's keep going. This is long to oot. I just want to show you this. I'm not going to eat it because it is underripe, and this proves my point. You know, these Brabas, unfortunately, they're all ripening at the same time in that 5 to 10, 15 day window. And if it rains like this hurricane barrel is coming in, it's going to ruin a lot of these. So I had to pick this one. I had no choice. This would be a good candidate for jam or drying or processing or smoothies or something like that. Um, not really for fresh eating, but we'll you know what, let's try it. Yeah, it just, it doesn't have the developed flavor yet. And underripe figs have this resinous to them. The, the latex within them gives the flavors a resinous flavor. And once the fig ripens properly, the resin flavor goes away. And you don't get that annoying mouthfeel or, you know, really to me, poor flavor because of that. All right, we're going to do White Marseille next. White Marseille is an extremely popular fig throughout the world. I think there's a two-story White Marseille fig actually growing in Philadelphia that I was able to obtain cuttings from. This White Marseille, I believe, if I'm, not, if I'm remembering correctly, I think this one came from Edible Landscaping down in Afton, Virginia. Shout out to them. I'm sure they, they really know the power of Breba, having figs in the ground for so long as they have, but also um, you know, being in a slightly warmer zone B uh, zone 7B, excuse me. 
Let's try the one that's more ripe. This is, this is such an underrated, underrated variety. Oh man, it's so sweet. Decent seed crunch. That's how you can identify this fig. It's white pulp on the outs on the inside, but then the brown seeds contrast with the white pulp and it's a honey fig. So it's pretty honey sweet, tastes like honey, but it's not true honey because honey is produced by bees. It's a nectar that figs produce. I actually almost prefer it less ripe. It has a little bit of a grassiness to it. That makes it a little bit more interesting and more balanced rather than just so much sweetness. Here's LSU Huye. We did a uh, tasting of this in the last one. These are striking. These ripened pretty much to perfection and they're red on the inside. They, they <laughs> They look so good. They're pretty much dried up there on the tree. They have brown sugar spots on them. That is, that's quite impressive. Really, really nice. I'm very curious to see how these taste compared to the main crop. Honestly, just as good, if not better. I might even say that they taste better. How crazy is that? This actually is the best LSU Huye I've ever eaten. Oh man, so thick and jammy. And the, and the flavor. And the skin has like a thickness, like uh, a chewiness to it, like an LSU tiger. But the, the berry flavor is there. I mean, it's actually the most pronounced berry flavor out of all the figs I've tasted so far. That's incredible. Wow. That might just be the best Braba. It might be the best Braba I've ever eaten. I am shocked to be saying that right now. I, I don't even know if I should be saying that right now. All right, here's Rosa Esmeralda, which is a similar variety to Long de Oot, I've been told and I've been guessing but the Brabas are ripening way earlier. The Brabas are also kind of red. <laughs> uh, so it's definitely a strain of Long de Oot, but different. And that to me is interesting. I would rather grow, you know, 10 different types of Celeste, 10 different types of Hardy Chicago, different types of White Marseille, different sources of Desert King, et cetera, et cetera to find one that's better than the rest. These Brabas are clearly a lot smaller than the Long de Oot. Now, that is a good thing for me. Maybe not a good thing for everybody else. Maybe that's not what you want. But uh, smaller figs def definitely ripen better at a higher quality here. Let's try it. It's quite good, really good. Very sweet, jammy. That's a high quality Braba. And you know, these Brabas, I'm telling you, I have like eaten these now, enough of them. Like even the white Marseille is just as good as the main crop is. So is that really true that we keep saying the Brabas are not, I keep saying it too. I've said it for years. But having these trees in the ground established, I think it's false. I do, I think it's somewhat false. Uh, maybe it's a hair, the main crop's a hair better. These are some of the best Brabas I've ever eaten. So I don't know, maybe this year is just really special. All right, now here's a Sultane Braba. I have two of them. This might be, after this season, one of my favorite figs. And the reason I'm saying that is because I was here two days ago picked a whole bunch of figs and these were not ripe. But Sultane ripened in two days very quickly and is now pretty much dried on the tree. So that is absurd. Two or three days later, we have this quality. 
um, which means the hang time is rather short, hang, short hang time. They're gonna ripen to a higher quality more consistently. That's what I've been preaching this whole time in this video. So for performance, this might be one of my, one of my favorite figs. Let's see how the flavor is though. I haven't had a Sultane fig in quite a while. It's been years. Uh, I grew this years ago and it really, really impressed me. And then my tree died in the greenhouse where I was keeping it in a pot. Finally got it back, planted it in the ground and then it took years. Finally this year it survived the winter time. We uh, lignified the branches pretty good the following year or the prior year. Then it was able to get through the winter time. It produced Breba this year and it's even producing a lot of main crop. Uh, and I'm sure going forward, it's gonna be a lot hardier of a tree. A lot of people confuse this with so, uh, Bologna, Noir de Bologna. It's not anything like Bologna. Bologna has a, uh, it's a larger size, a variable shape, and the skin can be kind of green and have these green patches in it. Also, the inside looks very different. This is a very um, unique pulp pattern here on the inside of this. Uh, so I don't know how, I don't know why people keep saying this. You, you need to read something on that because just trust me, it's not the same. Wow. Really, really thick. It's a pretty darn good sugar fig. I would say they're just right up there with all the other amazing figs here I'm ripening. This might even be slightly better than Moro de Caneva. Mm -mm. It's certainly really close, but I think there's a little bit of extra complexity in the Moro de Caneva. That Sultane fig was incredible. Um, I think we had an issue with the camera just stopped recording and I compared it to a really high quality sugar fig like Moro de Caneva. Now I don't even know what this variety is. I'm being honest here. I don't know what this is. Oh, you know what this is? This is, um, Moscatel, uh, Moscatel Bronco or it's really an unknown Dotado type that I have. And this unknown Dotado uh, or Kadota or Peter's Honey, whatever you want to call it, there's so many names for this fig. And I don't have a name for it. It was labeled as Moscatel Verde. And I, so I assume it's Moscatel Bronco. And that's where the mistake was made. But I've had Moscatel Bronco and they're not this good. This is a really, really nice honey fig. And this is the Breva from that tree. I just remembered now. The, the bottom there is purple. That is just crazy. And the pulp pattern's going like this, like a zipper. You know what I really love about this fig? Is that the skin has such a different texture than the pulp. And they contrast so well together that it gives you this awesome eating experience. And this main crop does the same thing. That's very good. I think it could have used a little bit more time. But I love the chewiness of it. The flavor's all right. A little watery, but it's probably just because of the tree. I'm gonna over watering a lot of the trees this year. That one comes from a pot. Excuse me for talking about my mouthful, but when they come from a pot, the quality is just not the same. So another reason to grow them in the ground, another reason proving my point that they can be reliable. All right, here we have some hardy Chicago Brabas. I think we have one from Luisa's fig. Shout out to my friend, Bill. Shout out to Peter Kinderi. Um, and I think the other one is from my friend Anthony, a hardy Chicago that he gave me. 
It's either Bari or St. Rita, I can't remember. But these are, one of them's from an in-ground tree, the other one's from a potted fig, potted tree. All right, what's going on here? Come on, camera. There it is. I think the more the one that's more ripe is from the Louisa tree. So let me let me try that. It's not fermented. It has a really beautiful color to it. It's very good. Very good hardy Chicago fig. Now that's comparable to the main crop. It just is. Here's the other one. Not as ripe, but still very good. You could see, you could taste the quality there. And that one's in a pot. So for me, I'm thinking to myself, all right, Hardy Chicago is not really supposed to produce a lot of Brava. You might get some here and there, certain sources of it. Might produce more of them or less of them. Maybe planting them in the ground and choosing a variety that does produce Brava or can produce Brava or source of it is a good idea. I think that's um, a nice bonus if you have a hardy Chicago fig and you could actually get Brava off of it. That to me is a, a really nice, a nice early, early fig there. All right, here we have um, some Moro de Caneva figs. I'm sorry, these are Neruciolo de Elba. They're really small. I actually don't think they are the smallest. The, the Sultane had a pretty small one on there. And every now and then you get some small ones of Brabas because the trees are just not established uh, as much as they should be in, that, in those situations. And that's why you get some weird, weird small ones. These have a, a bitter skin to them. But let me see if I can taste one that doesn't have that. The, also, the pulp is staining on my skin. The pigmentation is quite amazing. So that's Elba. Let's try this last one. We can call it a day and talk about some of the recommendations I would make. Um, all right. Yeah, quite bitter. And it's in the skin. And the reason why it is bitter is because the, the sugar content in this fig, I think, is a little lower. Where the bitterness is so high that it doesn't, it overpowers the sweetness. When you have bitter coffee, a lot of people like to put sugar in it. That's the way it, it balances out the perceived bitterness. So the perceived bitterness in this is higher. Now that one I just ate had very little amounts of it. So if you like bitter foods, this is like almost like coffee. It has like coffee flavors maybe. I think that's kind of a stretch, but yeah, those are the, the Brabus here guys. I, I thank you for getting this far. Now as to my recommendations, I think it's, you have to grow, if you want Brabas, variety like Desert King, Vila de Bordeaux, Moro de Caneva, Green Michurinska, or an Adriatic type fig. I actually have some Adriatic JH Brabas that are not ripened yet. Um, so a, the Adriatic figs can and will ripen Brabas. Not a ton of them, but you can get them. Uh, there are other varieties we didn't even mention. Well, first of all, LSU Huye is probably higher in my ranks now. Same thing with Brianzolo Rosso. I think there's a place for White Marseille or Barbalone if you're really interested in having more Brabas. Um, I think there's also a place for figs like Dalmati and also Long de Oot, which produce gigantic Brabas. Um, 
There's also a fig called taro you might want to look into, which can produce really, really large brevas. Um, we also ripened some brevas from in the past, whether it was this year or prior years, on Grease de Saint Jean. Those are some exceptional brevas. I really liked uh, the Sultane Breba. I really liked Sucret or Col Noir produces a nice Breba, although only in favorable years. Um, I actually really like this Rosa Esmeralda. I, honestly, I liked all of the figs I ate today. There wasn't a single one that I was like, okay, that was not very good. Uh, let's see here. I think those, some of the ones I mentioned already are really the classics, especially Villa de Bordeaux, which I don't have in front of me, and especially Desert King, which I don't have in front of me. Um, what else am I missing? There's also Vertolino and Salame, which are very similar figs to each other, just different sources of it that show different characteristics in uh, very obvious ways, which I find to be amazing. Um, I think actually Peter's Honey, I tell people this a lot, or Dotato, Cadota, Moscatel Bronco, I think there's a place for those as well. If I lived in a really hot and dry place, I would rather grow those over a big variety like Golden Riverside or Golden Rainbow or Yellow Long Neck. Um, in my opinion, I think those taste better, the Dotado types. And if they can reliably produce Breba, which the others don't, that's a huge, in my opinion, a huge benefit that I would personally go for. Um, what are some other ones that I really recommend there's a few back here we have that we haven't tried yet as well uh, like um, I think it's uh, Torbole for my friends in Omazoli nursery we have um, still the salame Breba to try even though I think we got some last year oh there's also Vagabond which didn't know how by Fera by Ferris it was but Vagabond's incredibly good. They taste like grapes when you eat them. And for me, um, if that thing's going to produce Breba like it is right now, that's a huge plus. Smith, for some reason, has produced a lot of Breba for me in the past, even though it's not supposed to. Uh, I would be very curious to see in the future if I could make that happen. And those are incredible Brebas. There's also the Paradiso figs which uh, will produce incredible Brebas too. The Paradiso figs, the, especially the true Paradiso, Paradiso from Ciro, or the one that is depicted in Galicio's drawings, a lot of them that I grow produce very high quality Brebas. And um, there's also Paradiso from Bode, which produces a high quality Breba. Um, and if you go to my website, my blog, you'll find the Paradiso. If you type in Paradiso in the search bar, you'll see the um, article I've written on the Paradiso figs. There's quite a few of them that actually are by Ferris uh, or by Farah, And that is the main descriptor for whether or not it actually is the real original Paradiso. So interesting point there. Um, there's also Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco, or also Figoin, it's called. It's also called Figolino or Zigolino. It has a lot of names. It's the Verdino of the North. Verdino is basically this Adriatic fig, but that's more popular in Tuscany or the south of Italy, whereas Verdino del Nord is from the north. Obviously, there's Elba, which is a nice bonus. Brianzolo Rosso, which is a nice bonus to have all that, that Breba there. And I feel like I'm definitely missing one, but if you guys are curious and you want to see more about these Breba producers, obviously I have other videos, but you can also go to my blog, figboss.com. The link is probably already in the description. I put it there, I'm sure, where it links you to the article I've written about Brebas and you could see a full list of varieties there. So if you're ever interested. There's also, by the way, a guy named Bob Duncan. I think that's his name. In British Columbia, I think he lives in. 
And he has a very good assortment of varieties that produce Brava, some of which I don't have here and would like to grow at some point. Um, so rather interesting, um, the success that he has over there. And he's a good person to look, look at if you want additional information on Brava's. So, uh, oh, there's Black Mission. Black Mission, of course. Black Mission's a classic one. And there's so many varieties that produce, so many sources of Black Mission that will produce Bravas. Catch you guys for the next one, all right? Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button for me, and we'll see you for the next video.